But I think for me, it kind of came down to like a feel and I felt like when I was at com- at Harvard, it was very comfortable. I liked the small class size and I felt like it would just be kind of a cozy environment. And then maybe one other thing I will add is just look into all the schools and understand like what types of interesting opportunities you might get there that you might be interested in. So for me, I had this idea that I wanted to have kind of like an unconventional dental career. And I think that's kind of what my dental key ended up being for me. So I felt that at Harvard, I might be able to do something a little bit more unique. Um, But there were other schools too that had really cool like academic programs and stuff. So just see where you fit in that respect. I tried to get into our jewelry making class, but it um, required me to be there two evenings, six to 9 p.m. and I I couldn't commit the time. So I ended up enrolling in a histology class instead. And I loved histology, learning it in undergrad and having um, a little less of the, what came in dental school, I had like the basic knowledge. So it was really nice to have histology. And I also took human anatomy before coming. And so I think those just having the basic knowledge of how the human body works is really, really important coming into dental school. But if that's not your journey, that's okay too, because you do learn it in dental school. Yeah, so seconding seconding or thirding the physiology anatomy course, I thought that was super helpful for the DAT and also for dental school. Um, and then for stuff I did, I really liked to draw and I also did some tiny origami. So that was really fun to learn how to work in a really small space. And I know some other friends took ceramics classes before dental school. And another thing that isn't necessarily easing into dental school, but maybe easing into life as a dentist, was that I was an office manager for a couple months. So learning how to do billing and insurance um, was really nice and something you don't really get to practice in dental school. So it's a cool opportunity if there are any that arises. Yeah, so like a typical day for me, uh, I would wake up at probably around 7 a.m. That's just my internal alarm clock. So in the mornings, it would either be go to preclinic lab, uh, go to lecture, which is online right now, like my change in, in the autumn, or go to the clinic and help assist a D3 or D4 on, on their patients. And then I usually have lunch from 12 to 1, and then from 1 to 4, it kind of be like the same thing in the morning where it's going to be lecture, uh, preclinic lab, or help an upperclassman with whatever patient they're working on. Um, from there, that's when um, there's a lot more variation. Um, I always try to get like some some like relaxation time, some exercise time, or some break because as busy as dental school is, you definitely need to like find time for yourself. That is super important. And then uh, just basically pretty much studying or um, if I'm not really busy during that time, just chill, hang out with friends, maybe go out a little bit. Uh, I think there's like this perception that like dental school is extremely overly busy and you never have free time at all. Uh, I can say like you definitely like try to find free time like it, it, it comes and I wouldn't worry about having no life at all. First year at HSDM, we are entirely integrated with the medical school. So I am technically a medical student right now, bar every once in a while that we're in the dental clinic. Um, Just as a preface, Zoom has been kind of weird, uh, very weird for everyone, but especially for us, because the first half of the year we were completely online. So that was hard to get to know people. We had to be very deliberate about seeing people after classes. So that was difficult. But now that we're all in Boston and now that we're all able to see each other in our classes are hybrid, it's actually really nice. Um, So some mornings we start at 8 a.m., some mornings we start at 9 a.m. Sometimes we're in person, sometimes we're not. But either way, um, we always end class at 1230, Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday. We have the rest of the day to do extracurriculars, do prep for the next day, which is basically uh, reading a whole bunch of stuff to be prepared to do talk about cases the following class. And it's really great because there is plenty of free time um, and it you can modulate how much work you actually put into doing the prep assignments, depending on how much you have to do that day. 
Um, now on Wednesdays, we have our quote unquote, learn how to be a doctor day. So that's a full day, usually eight to five. Uh, right now we're in the hospitals, but every other Wednesday we're in dental clinics. And it's really great because we get to actually do dentistry in the middle of medical school, uh, basically just assisting D3s and D4s. And it's great to see dental patients and interview dental patients and do a few uh, intraoral things. What Joe is talking about with all that prep work, um, that's because Harvard Medical School has a flipped classroom sort of uh, teaching style. And a lot of dental schools are actually adopting more flipped classroom approaches. Um, so that's something to think about could be part of your life as a dental student one day where you're preparing for class and then you're spending a lot of your time reading things outside of class, but once you're in class, you're actually just talking with your classmates about cases and learning that way. I, it kind of depends. Um, so some things that I'm involved with outside of school are research and then my dental key, and then I try to spend, you know, take a little bit of time for myself as well. Um, so I think whenever I have some free time where I'm not in class or clinic, I try to break it up and like try to go to the research lab at least once a week. Um, on the weekends, maybe I do a little bit more of the things I've been pushing off in the week. Um, and then like at night after five is more when I spend time on my dental key. Um, but I think it really just depends on what works for you. If you're someone who is really good at scheduling by like, you know, making a checklist to do's or having a calendar where everything's broken up, that can work really well. I've gotten a little bit more into that lately. But like other people said, it's not like you have no time in dental school, you'll figure it out. I liked all of my anthropology courses, especially medical anthro. Um, what about you, Joe? I'm biased, you can probably guess what I'm gonna say, but any philosophy course is wonderful. It changes the way that you think. And I love it. Nick? I know some of our panelists said this already, but anatomy and physiology saved my life in dental school. Alice? Took a research course that gave me some exposure to research, so really good. Oh, that's fun. Miriam? I took a oil painting course and it was a lot of uh, hands-on work and I got to practice my hand skills. Okay, how about you, Nikki? Uh, I took a Jap Japanese sumie painting class, which was great for working on hand skills and not helpful for dental schools, but I took a Harry Potter class, which was super fun. And I think that because you take all of the same courses in dental school as everyone else, you should take really fun courses in college because it's your last opportunity to choose what classes you take. That's true. Emily? I second what Nikki said, and then also um, a research course. Okay, and Jen? I took a spirituality and health class and it was just about wellness in the four categories, so that one. Thank you so much for watching this video. A special thank you to Elizabeth and all of our wonderful panelists for making this event possible. If you want to check out some of our other dental content, check us out at mydentalkey.com or follow us on our various social media platforms. Also, make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel to see when we post videos next. Until then, see you next time.